intelligent design. Two, intelligent design theory. Merely looking at the remarkable design and intricacies of the world, see the images to the left, gives strong evidence for a creator's existence. The idea that design points to a designer is called the intelligent design theory. If you see a phone, camera, shirt, or a chair, you know that it had a creator, and it did not form by itself. The more complex the idea or the object is, the more intelligent you consider the maker. Imagine someone makes a chair, that isn't such a big deal. But if you were to build a computer from scratch, that would be a whole other level. Simply put, the greatness of the creation reveals the greatness of the creator. By examining how well a computer operates, we can determine its creator's intelligence. When a person looks at the world, how it works, and how awesome it is, it does not make sense that there is no designer creator. If you were to walk in the middle of the desert and find an iPhone, would you say that there was a windstorm that caused all the pieces to form together over billions of years? Obviously not. Since we clearly see that the iPhone shows intelligent design, we would not assume it came together by chance, because it is too ordered and statistically, it is nearly impossible for it to have formed on its own. Therefore, it must have a creator. The same could be applied to the creation of life and the universe itself. Since it is so ordered and complex, it seems that it must have a creator. In other words, design points to a designer. Additionally, the second law of thermodynamics tells us that the universe is constantly going in one direction, from a state of order to disorder, chaos. Everything in this world follows the laws of entropy. The law of entropy states that everything in this world is constantly in a state of chaos and decay. In other words, everything is breaking apart. All molecules are moving away from each other and are slowly breaking apart. Therefore, a state of order can only be achieved when a force acts upon it to make it orderly. If the Earth is in a state of order, then it is reasonable to say that there is some unknown force that is acting upon the Earth to make it orderly. To take this idea a step further, imagine if you were to go to an atheist professor who believes the entire universe was created on its own and tell him that you were walking in an alley and found an iPhone, which you claim naturally formed over billions of years. The professor would probably think you are out of your mind and recommend psychiatric treatment for saying something so improbable and foolish. You then ask the professor, what is more complex, this iPhone or the brain of a human being? Obviously, he would answer the brain of the human being. A human's brain has over 100 trillion neural connections perfectly aligned with one another, and each neuron is 10,000 times thinner than a piece of hair. If the neurons and the communications among the nerves did not work properly, a person would be at risk of stroke or permanent brain damage. It is estimated that the brain has around 2.5 million gigabytes. On the other hand, the iPhone has a couple hundred gigabytes. In addition, the brain processes information faster than the world's fastest supercomputer, which is obviously much faster than the iPhone. Now, if an iPhone with its complex design and function has a creator, then it seems that our complex brain, with its very intricate design and function, should also have a creator. In regards to the idea of intelligent design, Paul Davies, a renowned theoretical physicist, said that, the appearance of design is overwhelming. The bottom line is that design points to a designer, just as every creation has a creator. Three, fine-tuned universe. Another way we can see intelligent design is by analyzing the placement of the planets in our solar system, which allows the Earth to sustain life. There are hundreds of parameters needed in order for a planet to produce and sustain life. There are hundreds of parameters needed in order for a planet to produce and sustain life, every single one of which must be perfectly met or the whole thing falls apart. For example, if Earth was too close to the sun, everything would burn, and if it was too far, everything would freeze. Also, Jupiter's placement in our solar system is positioned such that, if not for its gravitational pull, many large asteroids would collide with the Earth, destroying all life in the process. With that being said, what is the probability that Earth would be placed in the most perfect spot in the solar system, enabling it to harbor life, specifically human life? The probability for just one enzyme, a protein, to evolve through the inanimate is 1 over 10 to the power of 39,950. Furthermore, the probability of humans coming into existence by evolving from spontaneous generation is 1 over 10 to the power of 1.25 trillion. In other words, the probability of this happening is almost zero. To put this into perspective, 
This is the same probability as rolling a double six with dice 100 trillion times in a row. This idea is absolutely mind-blowing, and yet people often think it was all a coincidence and everything was created randomly. According to New York Times best-selling author Eric Metaxas, simply put, the odds against life in the universe are astonishing, yet here we are. To take this a step further, the fine-tuning necessary for life to exist on a planet is nothing compared with the fine-tuning required for the universe to exist at all. There are so many parameters in order for the universe to exist right now that the odds of the universe existing are so heart-stoppingly astronomical that the notion that it all just happened defies common sense. Could it really be that every one of those many parameters has been perfectly met by accident? At what point is it fair to admit that it is science itself that suggests that we cannot be a result of random forces? Doesn't assuming that an intelligence that is beyond space and time created these perfect conditions, in fact, require far less faith than believing that a life-sustaining Earth and universe just happened to beat the inconceivable odds? We must understand that life coming into existence by itself is extremely improbable, let alone the whole universe. In regards to the fine-tuning argument, even Christopher Hitchens, who was one of the atheist's most aggressive advocates, said that, without question, the fine-tuning argument was the most powerful argument of the other side. 